Dr. Bruce Lipton has really revolutionized biology. He has actually come up with the idea that your own beliefs can change the way your DNA acts in your life. He has debunked the central dogma that wants you to believe that you are slaves to your genes, which you, of course, are not. That we've always been programmed with the belief that the universe is made out of matter and energy as two separate things. And quantum physics says, no, they're both the same. It's all energy. Quantum <laughs> physics tells you that it's all vibration. You want to change the world, you change it with vibration, which is consciousness and our ability to make sound. <laughs> but first, please, can you introduce a little bit, yeah. what did you discover as a stem cell biologist? Well, first, let's say what a stem cell is. You're actually made out of 50, 50, 50, from six a trillion, a trillion cells. Every minute we start to lose, oh, like a million cells are dying. The blood mm -hmm. cells are dying, the hair cells, the skin cells, all this. I say, yeah, but if you lose billions of cells a day, how many days can you go before you're dead? <laughs> but we're still here all the time. And it turns out because in the 50 trillion cells, there's a population of special cells called stem cells, which is another word for embryonic cell. In fact, before you were born, the cell was called an embryonic cell. And the moment you're born, that cell still there is now called stem cell. Okay? okay. So they can become anything in the body. Uh, and I cloned them. And I said, what is cloning? I said, I put one cell in a Petri dish by itself, one stem cell, and it divides every 10 hours. So first there's one, then there's two, then there's four, then there's eight. And it, after a week, 30,000 cells in the Petri dish. I split those cells into three different Petri dishes. So all the cells have, all the dishes have genetically identical cells. But I changed the chemistry of the culture medium. That's what we grow cells in. That's the environment. Culture medium is the laboratory version of blood. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to grow human cells, I say, what's human blood made out of? And I make culture medium based on that chemistry. So I have three dishes. All the cells are genetically the same, but I have three different environments. In one dish, the cells form muscle. In the second dish, the cells form bone. Mm -hmm. In the third dish, the cells form fat cells. They were all genetically identical. <laughs> so what made the difference to go to muscle or bone or fat? What, what controlled that? I go, the culture medium controls that. That's what the experiment showed different culture medium, different fate. I said, the genes didn't control this. They're all the same genes. Right. So they had different fate. It wasn't the genes. So the relevance about all this is now we come back to the human. The stem cells are in your body. You're a skin covered Petri dish. You've got 50 trillion cells inside the skin dish that you have, but you have the original culture medium, the blood. All of a sudden I said, oh my God, a cell is a programmable chip. And that's why an embryo cell before it's it's been programmed, it can form anything, skin, muscle, bone, brain, it can form anything. So it's a embryo is a chip that hasn't been programmed. The chemistry of the culture medium controlled the genetics. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make a difference if the cell is in a plastic dish or the cell is in a skin dish. Mm -hmm. It's still controlled. The genetics are controlled by the culture medium, the blood. Well, if the chemistry of the blood controls the fate of the cells, what controls the chemistry? And we're going to take two steps here, and then I hope it blows your mind, because the brain is the chemist that puts the chemistry into the blood. I go, yeah, but now comes the last and biggest question. What chemistry should the brain put into the blood? And here goes the answer. You ready? Whatever picture you have in your mind the brain translates the picture into complementary chemistry. Mm -hmm. So if you have a picture of love in your mind, you release beautiful chemicals of love, dopamine, pleasure, yes. oxytocin, bonding, uh, growth hormone. I go, yes, when people fall in love, the chemistry of the blood in love has growth hormone and they glow and they're healthy and they're happy when they fall in love. And I go, yeah, that's the chemistry of love. But I say, if you have fear, that's a different picture. Then you go cortisol, right? In the blood. <laughs> that's that it. You, you put in the down. stress hormones, yeah. you put in things that affect the immune system. I say, oh, that's a different biology. Yeah. 
The picture you hold in your mind right. controls your genetics and your behavior. If you live in fear, then your body is going to be built for fear, and it, that's not very healthy at all. The picture is, if you're in love, you've got a different chemistry. Yeah, if you're in right. fear, and I say, so the cells are always responding to the chemistry, but the chemistry is always responding to the consciousness. And I say, as you change your consciousness, you change your chemistry. Uh, and the best scientific example of that is called placebo effect. Mm-hmm. A person is sick, uh, they they want to get well. The doctor says, I got the brand new pill. This is the newest pill. And they take the pill, they get better. And then they go back and they say, oh, that was a sugar pill, a placebo. No. I say, stop right there. And I say, what, what made the person get better? Not the sugar pill. That doesn't do it. I said, what was it? The belief in the sugar pill. And all of a sudden I said, yep placebo positive thinking about medicine gives you a positive health what about negative belief most important point reinhardt is negative belief is equally powerful and controlling your biology but in a different direction a positive belief gives you health a negative belief can cause any disease in the world you can get cancer from a negative belief that's basically what it is we are not victims of our genetics. We are creating our genetic activity by the consciousness. You change your consciousness, you change your life. The mind controls the genes. I go, yes. But I say there are two minds. Ha! And one mind is called the conscious mind. That's the latest evolution. It's right behind your forehead, a piece of brain right here. And that's where the spirit, consciousness, the mm-hmm. identity of that individual lies. I say, but the other part of the brain, which is the biggest part back here, is called subconscious that means below conscious okay so let me explain the brain is a computer yeah it's the best computer we've ever known okay well and the the problem is this people are afraid Mm -hmm. and the media is making them afraid of course this is the part when you scare somebody you've already challenged their immune system i say (laughs) why Uh, uh, let me give it because it's a simple understanding it's like oh it makes sense you're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger. Mm-hmm. I say, you, you need energy to, to survive. You have to run. Mm-hmm. I say, where's the energy going to go? I say, well, energy's in the blood. That's what carries the energy. I say, when the stress hormones come in because the tiger is chasing you, it shuts off the blood flow to the, the gut, the viscera, the, mm-hmm. all the organs, pancreas, stomach, intestines. I go, it shuts off the blood supply. I say, why? I don't need to fix and maintain the body if the tiger is going to catch me. (laughs) Then I don't. That's a waste of my energy. I want all the energy. Go to my arms and legs to escape. So I say, stress hormones shut off the the mechanism of the viscera, the growth and maintenance of the body while you're being chased. When when we're really sick, you don't have a lot of energy to even get out of bed Mm -hmm. because the immune system uses a lot of energy to keep you healthy. I go. So I'm being chased by a tiger. And I have a bacterial infection. So I'm putting energy into run away. I'm putting energy into the infection. I go, why do you worry about the infection? Because if the tiger catches you, the infection is not a problem anymore. <laughs> You're done, okay? So the, this is the point you brought up, and this is the most important point for the audience to understand. Stress hormones shut off the immune system so that the energy can be used to run away from the tiger before being used to fight the bacteria. Uh, And and this is the most important understanding because stress is the cause of over 90% of illness on this planet. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks genes are causing the illness. I go, less than 1% of illness is connected to genes. 90% of illness is stress because when you put the stress hormones in, what do they do? They shut off the maintenance of the body. They shut off the immune system, and they even shut off the intelligence. They go, what do you mean they shut off the intelligence? I say, if the conscious brain, the one up in the front that's connected to you, your person, is a slow processor, like a slow computer. The subconscious is like a super fast computer. If you're being chased by a tiger, it's not the time to think of, oh, oh, I'm be- oh, oh. I go, no, no, run! <laughs> And so the stress hormones shut down the blood vessels in the forebrain, where the consciousness is, pushes the blood with the energy to the hindbrain, where reflexes and reaction, no thinking, 
because thinking is slow. So I say, so then stress hormones do three things. Number one, they shut off the growth and maintenance of the body. Number two, they shut down the immune system, which protects you from internal problem. And number three, they make you less intelligent. And I go, <laughs> yeah. look, at the, look at the world today. The stress levels are overriding. As I said, 90% of illness is straight stress, not mm. genetics. It's lifestyle. It's the fear. It's not living in harmony. They're, they're on edge. <laughs> and I go, well, that automatically compromises your health. You have such a nice quote also, the universe is immaterial. <laughs> It is mental and spiritual. And this is from quantum physics, the most valid science on the planet. And it says the universe is immaterial. Mm -hmm. It's mental and spiritual. Uh, Max Planck, the, one of the founding fathers of quantum physics, said the mind is the matrix of all matter. I say, and the quote we just said, the universe is immaterial, it's energy, but it's shaped by the consciousness right. and the spirituality that we have. So it says, if the world is looking bad, then you don't go out and change the world. First, you go and change the consciousness, because that's what's creating the world that we're in. And, yes. I, and actually, I think the negative programs we have kind of recorded till the age of seven and so, Uh, then are making us so susceptible to fear. It's just so easy, you know, when, when you have this program to just, you know, submit or, okay, that, okay. Uh, remember, again, and the fear was the, th the chemicals of fear shut off your thinking. So mm -hmm. you are submitting only because I'm not thinking. I'll just say, whatever he said, whatever she said, I, I'm not thinking. I'll just do what they say. And this coronavirus is... People are thinking because they've been programmed to think that this is a lethal virus. I go, mm. it is not a lethal virus. 99.98% of the people recover no problem from this. It's only lethal if a person isn't healthy. So we're not telling people to get healthy. That would be how you get people mm. back together again. We're just telling them, be afraid. Be afraid. Stop thinking. Right. Because when you're afraid, you just respond, react. No thinking. And so the world is not thinking its way into a, a problem that's destroying. I was teaching in the medical school um, medical students, and I was teaching uh, cell biology and understanding the nature of genetics. Uh, and I go back in those days, uh, the conventional story, unfortunately, it's still the conventional story because the people, the public hasn't caught up with the science. Mm -hmm. The story was... Uh, that genes control the character of your life. What we have been teaching is victimization, meaning your life is not under your control. Your life is under the control of the genes, and you have no control over them. And all of a sudden, I say we're a victim. And people, please understand, when a person perceives themselves to be a victim, they're perceiving themselves to be powerless. It's, it's a new understanding of genetics. It's called not genetic control. It's called epigenetic control. It's a revolutionary difference because epi means above. I mean, what do we call skin? We call skin epidermis. I said, why do we call it that? Because epi means above. And so I say epidermis means above the dermis. And I go, yes, just underneath the skin. What about epigenetic control? And I go, Old story, this character is under genetic control, meaning genes control the character. New story, this character is under epigenetic control. Epi means above epigene, above the gene control. And that's when all of a sudden we started to recognize that the environment is controlling the genes. Now, the profound difference for all the people out here is very important for this reason. The new story, epigenetics, says it's the environment and response to the environment that controls the genes. Then we went from victim to master. If you understand this, then you recognize I have power over my genes through my thoughts. Consciousness is creating our life experience. This is not philosophy. This is actually physics.